Hey there EOS fans, Shaw from EOS Blocksmith here. Whether you like it or not, forks seem to be coming to the EOS network. So it's important for you as an EOS token holder to know what forks are and to know what they mean for you. In order to do that, we need to go over some concepts and terminology. If you're like most people that I know, you kind of understand bits and pieces of this, but maybe not the whole thing. And it's really important that you create a framework into which you can categorize some of these projects as they pop up or as you hear about them. Specifically, I like to categorize them into three things. Chain forks, code forks, and side chains. A typical fork or chain fork is when one blockchain splits off from another blockchain at some point after the original blockchain has been running for a while. Usually, this happens after a fundamental disagreement occurs in the community about the direction that the original blockchain should take. Some prominent examples of this is when Ethereum Classic split off from Ethereum or when Bitcoin Cash split off from Bitcoin. Both chains share a common history and if you're a token holder prior to when the fork happens, usually you're credited with an equal amount of tokens on both networks. Now in EOS, we haven't seen a chain fork happen yet, but it's still a possibility. The chain is very young. Okay, a code fork is when one team takes the software code of a blockchain project and uses it to launch their own separate blockchain. Usually, they make some modifications to better suit their particular needs. A classic example of this is when Charlie Lee took the code for Bitcoin and created Litecoin with some small alterations. Most notably, he changed the block times from 10 minutes to 2.5 minutes, which makes Litecoin a little bit faster than Bitcoin to transact with. Now, in contrast to chain forks, which haven't really happened yet on the EOS network, code forks are appearing eminent. We've already had several groups announce that they're gonna use the EOS IO software to launch their own chains. Ones that you've probably heard of already might include Telos, the Ono Network, the Wax Network, the Warbly Network, and EOS Force. Now, all of these code forks of EOS, or alternative EOS IO blockchains, are going to have their own set of rules and potentially their own block producers. They also may or may not credit people who have EOS tokens or have been holding EOS tokens since the Genesis snapshot with some tokens on their respective networks. So it's important that you keep a loose eye on all the developments that are happening on these EOS IO forks because it may be worth something to you. Now the last subject I wanna to touch on today is the subject of side chains. Side chains are a completely different thing than chain forks and code forks. Nevertheless, people confuse them all the time with those things. Now, sidechains isn't a new idea at all. It's been around in the blockchain space for a while, but no one's really executed sidechains well up until this point. And similarly, on the EOS network, no sidechains currently exist, but they're a big part of Block One's plans for EOS moving forward in the future in terms of scalability. So it's important that you understand what sidechains are. Now, sidechains are essentially kind of like a buddy chain to the mainnet chain or a sidekick chain to the mainnet chain. Now the main feature of a side chain, even though it's its own blockchain, is that it's always linked or tethered to the main chain by something called a two-way peg. That's to say that the relationship of the price of an EOS token will always stay the same, stay fixed, to the price of the sidechain token. Whether that be two to one or 10 to one, that ratio is always gonna stay the same. There's also some other properties that need to be the case for sidechains. For example, sidechains can't have their own block producers. Sidechains have the same block producers as are on the mainnet. What's the purpose of a sidechain? Well, despite having those fixed relationships to the EOS mainnet, there's room to change other rules on a sidechain. 
Let's say you want to run a DAP that requires a lot of RAM and you don't have a ton of capital to buy all the RAM that you're going to need on the main chain to run that DAP. Well, if someone creates a side chain where RAM is a lot cheaper and a lot more available, that might be the perfect place for you to run that DAP. Side chains are going to create these side ecosystems that are tethered to the main EOS network but might have certain properties that make it more appealing for dApps or other applications. Sidechains are also a way for the EOS platform to scale. So like I mentioned earlier, sidechains are their own blockchains with their own capacity for transactions. As more and more sidechains get added on, the overall capacity for transactions of the EOS ecosystem increases, and that's called horizontal scaling. So what's the big picture here? What's the take home message? Well, with all of these potential EOS chains in the pipeline and also the potential for side chains and even chain forks, we're bound to see some new innovation, some new tools, some new concepts or ideas implemented on one of these chains that can be adopted by all of these chains and potentially make the entire EOS ecosystem more resilient and more efficient. All in all, I think the future is bright for all EOS holders. Well, hopefully this video gave you a good framework to further evaluate any new chains or forks on the EOS network as they get announced. As always, we'll drop some links in the description below and feel free to join us on Telegram or subscribe to our YouTube channel. See ya.